Hi all. For another instructive game today, we're going to look at one of my wins from the British Championship, which occurred in round 10. So I was white against Stephen Barrett, who was rated slightly higher than me. I played e4. I had prepared against him. I thought he'd play the um, Shaven England variation of the Sicilian. And I prepared the Cares line, so the Cares attack, which... I'd previously beaten Rugen years ago, and statistically he seemed to have lost a few games in this line. So I was keen to um, play sharply for a win. So after d6 I played g4, the Cares attack move. But now he innovated on his previous games, he played a quick e5. And I seem to remember that there was a slight problem with this from studying a rest of the world game on letsplaychess.com. A correspondence grandmaster by the name Peter Coleman had given the suggestion that this wasn't so good because of bishop b5 check with the idea of trying to swap off black's light squared bishop so white could easily more easily exploit these two light squares so i played bishop b5 check here and after bishop d7 i was happy to exchange off the light squared bishops and now i played knight f5 but i didn't really know the theory of this line black played h5 and all of a sudden white is facing some tactics here for example, um, g takes h5, which actually I think is the main line move. Knight takes e4. White has to play knight takes g7 here, so because knight takes e4, queen takes f5. Let's have a look at this. So this would be no good taking on d6 here, for example, because a bishop takes, queen takes, and now queen e4. So white has to be very careful in this line. Um, so in this position, I didn't play the main line move. Other moves are not statistically very good, like f3 or g5. Um, what I did do was an innovation. I played queen d3, but I am sacrificing not just the g pawn, but now I prepare another sacrifice of the h pawn, because I don't want him to be able to play rook h3. In this position, actually, Ribka seems to think it's equal with bishop g5. Let's have a quick look. Bishop g5, rook h3 queen e2 so there's still this white strategy of trying to clamp down on d5 um, in fact it, now it gives black as better with this exchange set rook takes c3 followed by queen c6 so e4 is being undermined so this is no good don't try this variation at home what i did was a secondary pawn sacrifice with h4 so there's probably uncharted opening theory and after knight c6 bishop g5 he did play a recommended Ribka move. He played knight h7, so he's chasing away that bishop immediately. And potentially, I'm, I'm left with this horrible liability on h4. But anyway, for the moment, I retreat to e3. And he plays um, castle's queenside. And I castle. And now, perhaps, um, he, he blundered. He didn't play as solid as he could. He played g6, and after knight g3, perhaps, you know, knight f6 immediately, or bishop e7. Where he put the bishop... Um, after knight f6, I played knight d5, and here he played bishop g7. But in, in, in this position, according to Ribka, white has actually a claim to an advantage with yet another pawn sack, h5. So if g takes, knight f5. And we have a crazy variation here. Knight takes ed, knight b4, queen e4. So the bishop moves back. Notice, though, that this rook is less protected now from its counterpart. So after queen check, queen takes b4 is now a, a nice tactic, because queen takes f5, bishop takes a7. So that unprotected rook is now really unprotected. So king takes queen a5. So, so this would be an advantage to white. So black has to be careful in these variations. And so this h5, which I've never considered, might actually give white a small advantage. What I played... Uh, was queen a3 and now black's able to just get a solid position with just king b8 after c3 I was, I was trying to prevent knight d4 he just plays b6 and now i was a bit concerned that my whole you know opening gambit is going to backfire here um i am a pawn down and also this pawn's weak here so i thought something fast has to happen so what I did here was um, gamble a bit. So I actually tried to expose his king. I played knight takes b6 to gain a few pawns uh, for the knight sack. After rook takes d6, he played queen b7. And actually, my king's a bit in trouble. 
this really shouldn't have been so easy to, to switch off my opponent's positional play. It's kind of an arrogant um, sacrifice. Because after bishop c5, he played another nice move, knight d7. And if my bishop moves, then there's bishop f8, screwing my, my rook against the queen. So in for a penny, in for a pound. Rook takes d7 now. After queen takes bishop d6, I have to try and keep the attack going now. So I swing, swing the rook in. But it's here he missed a critical defense, or rather offense. It really trans, transforms the position in his favor. If he had played, instead of queen e6, if he had played knight d4. So I've got some tactical liabilities here. This rook is only protected by the king, and it's computers which easily find resources based on that. So this lovely resource, if knight d4, we have both been thinking that bishop c5 was, was the answer. But here, black has the crushing, rook takes c5, queen takes, and now knight e2 check, believe it or not. Because look at this rook, just protected by the king. If here, knight takes e2, check, so the king can't move to b1 because the queen takes d1. And if king c2, there's queen a4. Of course, we've both not seen this variation. This is the sort of stuff computers lap up. And so after b3, queen takes e4, it's really all over. Um, this is really just devastating. So this didn't happen, thankfully. He didn't play knight d4 and find the, these amazing resources. He actually played queen e6. And this was a terrible blunder. Maybe... Um, he had been thinking that after rook d5, this would be an adequate defense, knight a7. But here, just rook a5 and he's in trouble. You know, how does he defend his knight? If he goes now to c6, which may have been the intention, then I've got the killer rook b5, which is mate, actually. So he has to passively defend his knight now with this awkward rook a8. And even though I'm a rook down now, it's a very difficult position for black. In fact, Rivka thinks it's a clearly winning position for white. I play the, the recommended move queen b4 of the king c8. I play now this move to try and shut down any h file counterplay. If he ever takes the knight f5. And black's really pinned up. He can't really do much, um, I thought, uh, here. But maybe actually knight c6 is playable, just about. Um, let's not go into that. He played king d8. And I played queen b7 now, so that's forcibly winning material. If queen takes d6, then rook d5, screwing the queen against the king. He played rook c8, and now queen takes a7. So I've regained some of my material, material and his counterplay really isn't there. He has a very difficult position, and he has to make 40 moves in the time control. And he starts um, making other concessions now. After check, king c2, he played f6, so he's dropping his g6 pawn. So I take that because I think that's strategically important to get this knight to f5 as well. So after rook d8, I play knight f5, protecting my bishop. And now he played bishop f4, allowing mate in one, knight g7 on move 36. So I was uh, very pleased with that win, although slightly guilty that you know knight d4 hadn't been played. Uh, so it wasn't a theoretically correct win. But, um, you know... It's computers that can walk these tight ropes much better than humans. They can find always the precise defences. When you're playing against humans who have to meet time controls like 40 moves in whatever, then that creates a great pressure on them to find the accurate defences. And it's much easier to be the attacker often in such situations. So um, let's have a quick overview and summary at this game. So I was hoping for a Kara's attack, straight Kara's attack, but he surprised me with e5. I remember this idea from a correspondence consultation game of exchanging off the light square bishops. But now I came up with my own opening novelty, queen d3. It's not in um, the master collection. I, it may never have been played ever before, especially with this idea now of h4. So this is a, a novel way of um, trying to keep the positional pressure on d5 and f5. But it probably isn't very sound. So he plays knight h7, a nice nice move actually, because he's almost going to consolidate his position now. But uh, I got a little bit of pressure to deal with, and I thought before he starts consolidating in a major way after b6, to um, try and at least expose his king and gain some pawns. And it worked out much better than perhaps it should have, uh, which I was very pr pleased about. So I had to further sacrifice to keep the attack going. 
and he missed his golden opportunity here to play knight d4. So queen e6 was played, and I was able to drive the win home just a rook down, but you know, it's very, very difficult for black to defend this position. The accurate defensive move here recommended is knight c6, but even so, Ribko thinks a slight advantage for white, even, even after that super accurate move. But he played king d8, and I was able to just drive the win home now with a few more moves after bishop f4, knight g7, mate. So an entertaining game, if, if not uh, theoretically correct. And it just shows it's easier to attack than defend. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.